welcome to tonight's broadcast. If this is your first time visiting, we want to welcome you and ask that you connect with us through the various social platforms that we're using. You can follow us on New Life A Ministries A Meet on Facebook. And also these teachings are uploaded to YouTube so you can subscribe to the channel, hit the bell notification, and you'll be notified when the next teachings are coming available new life family have a few announcements for you before we dive into the word so if you want to get something to write with or make a note of these announcements very important first and foremost our online giving even though we've gathered in the church building we are still not to full capacity so we're asking that you would still use the online giving and the mailing method to get your tithe and offering in to support the ongoing things of the ministry you can go to new life covenant church com forward slash give that would take you straight to the give page we're using givelify it is secure online giving Hit the Givelify button and you can set up your account. You can go from your mobile phone without having to go to the website and get it there as well. Just download the Givelify app to your phone if you haven't done so already. And use that method to do your online giving for your tithing offering. Also, you on the same page, you can mail in your tithing offering to the address that's on the page. Once again, New Life Covenant Church Amy.com forward slash give you'll see the address for sending in your tie through mail secure box and also if you're visiting and this ministry has touched you in whatever way we we'll ask that you go to that same page if you want to donate a one-time seed or if you want to partner with the ministry on an ongoing basis we would appreciate you joining us as well and for last but not least we made an announcement Sunday in regards to um, wearing masks. Due to the spike in the COVID-19 virus recently, we're taking precautionary measures to uh, protect ourselves, our seasoned saints, our young babies, and all those that are coming. So we are making it mandatory that we wear masks this coming Sunday. And maybe the following Sunday we'll just go by day-to-day -day basis but we're asking that everyone be mindful of their neighbor of their brothers and let's just protect ourselves during this time while there's a little spike in the virus we're not going to allow this to hinder us but we are going to take precautionary measures so this Sunday as you come together we are making it mandatory to wear masks there will be masks provided at the entrance you can see an usher if you don't already have one or come with one then we'll have one available for you so let's just get excited still stay excited come sunday let's worship one hour to wear a mask that's all it's going to be and we just give us time to join together amen so that is our announcements now let's dive into the word i'm going to open up with prayer and we're going to give in get into it i believe god has given me an awesome word for this session so follow with me as we go into the word get your bibles out a uh, little bit different setting on this teaching we don't have the tv up with the scriptures so get your phone get your bible get your tablet whatever you use and follow along with me let's open up with prayer heavenly father we thank you we glorify you we praise you i ask right now that you would speak through my heart speak through my mind speak through my lips father a word in this season directly from you god that we will be glorified and edified by it. we give you thanks in advance that through jesus christ we will overcome and we will stand firm on the word that has that brings encouragement, that brings nourishment so we can bear fruit in the earth. Father, I pray that you would touch this teaching, that you would touch those that are viewing, that you would touch their heart, Father, that something said through this message would spark them to get in alignment with you and see a change in their lives and we give you the glory for it in jesus name amen amen well let's dive into the word we're going to be coming from ephesians 2 and 10 and second corinthians 5 and 17 in this teaching 
Ephesians 2 and 10, 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. And I got my setting here where I can be free to go and flow into the message. So follow along with me. And I want to just, just go back to January when we did our, our New Year's service. And we, we've been hearing a lot about Vision 2020 and 2020 being the year of vision. And we talked about dominating in this decade. And January, February, March came. And then March we had just, just all hell breaking loose with this pandemic situation and going through midweek through the month. And then next thing you know, we're, we're stuck at home, isolated, in quarantine, trying to get a hold of this virus. So we had a pandemic that hit us and we started out excited January new year new decade 2020 I'm excited about it but I also gave us a, a, a illustration and also a definition of vision back in January and I want to give us a timeline as we go through the teaching today to point out some things and give my topic of discussion on where we're going to be coming from in this teaching and a lot of the scripture matter that we came from was Proverbs 29 and 18 you know the scripture passage very familiar where where there is no vision the people perish and then the scripture goes on to say but he that keepeth the law happy is he so what does that word vision mean in that scripture passage that we, we, we talk about a lot about 2020 and having vision and what's your vision for your life and, 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 and the dream that you have and the potential and the purpose that you have to make things happen to, to have the life that you want and you know we get all of these encouraging things but when we scale back and look at that term vision it meant that revelation or divine communication directly from God specific communication between God and his people so without specific communication from God the people perish so now let's look at the situation here and just give a timeline of events that has taken place up to today we go back to 2005 when Katrina hit and we had a a, 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 a a crisis on our hand that wasn't wasn't expected it was a hurricane that came through none of our control none of our doing but the hurricane came wiped some things out and a lot of people had to start over so they found themselves in a crisis situation and now how are you going to respond to the situation they have some that responded in a way that was was looking at it as the glass half empty some responded in the way as looking at it as the glass half full kind of getting a, a little bit ahead so let's go through it now that's 2005 watch this 2008 comes that's three years remember that number three we know three biblical in the Bible of, of, of the meaning of it 2008 an economic crisis hit and the housing market crashes people losing their houses people losing their minds people losing their business I myself in that mix of having a real estate firm that that went under due to the housing crash no one able to get mortgages so we have houses available but no financing available for those houses therefore banks are going under people are losing houses a global economic shaking that stirred up things so now 2005 2008 now let's fast forward to today 2020 let's look at the time frame 2005 to 2008 three years 2008 to 2020 12 years stick with me on that number 12 from 2008 to 2020 12 years say 12 years with me 12 years so now we have 2020 coming march we have a pandemic hit COVID 19 comes in steals kills destroy it's still yet going through we're seeing it minimized then we're seeing a spike 
Now, we, 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 we don't have a vaccine for it. We're trying to figure out what's going on, and we're looking at different leaderships that's out there, never been in this situation, new situation that they have to lead through, so we're really getting an understanding of where there's no vision, the people perish. Uh, we're looking at the landscape of what's happening right now, and we can see things that are perishing right now, but if we don't get a, a understanding of what the answer is to the problem that we're having right now, then we find ourselves in a situation where we are out of control and trying to get the situation taken care of ourselves when this is beyond us. When there's not a vaccine for the, the disease that's running rampant, what do you do? <laughs> Let me tell you what you do. Hold your, hold your horses. Hold your horses with me. So now we have also with that, fast forward all March, April, May, June, in that arena, we have now another issue that faces us with the killing of George Floyd at the hand of a police officer. No, all police officers are not bad. But we do have a situation here where we have one out of the, 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 the tribe that has caused this stirring up and knocking things out of control and now we have issue to deal with. As I said last week in dealing with the situation, not to continue to harp on that, but just to give a, a quick um, of, of what I said of, you know, yes we have a problem in this world, but it stems from sin. And in this message, I want to give us encouragement that the sin problem has been taken care of by the blood of Jesus Christ. So now, even though we have a sin problem, if you are in Christ, you don't have a sin problem or you shouldn't have a sin problem because the penalty of sin was taken care of by the death of Jesus Christ and in him rising, we are able to walk in newness of life. Now we have a, a, a decision to make that am I going to walk? in Christ or am I going to walk in the flesh? You have to make that decision for yourself and stand firm on that because you can't get the results with your vision. You can't get the results with your feelings. You can't get the results with your way of doing things. We have to lean not to our own understanding but in all our ways acknowledge the answer which is Jesus Christ and he we can't do it on our own but in him as the topic of my message is today, we are created for crisis. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm shouting, I ain't got no TV, I don't have nothing to hold me back, I'm going to get loose up in here. We are created for crisis. Watch the scripture passage, let's go to it in Ephesians. I'm going to start at verse 4. But God, who is rich in mercy... For his great love wherewith he loved us. That's verse 4 of chapter 2 of Ephesians. Verse 5. Even when we were dead in sins, had quickened us together with Christ. Even when we were dead in sins, he had quickened us together with Christ. Remember that. We've been created for this crisis. I think our pastor said it this way. We built for this. He has built us for a time as this. Not to run from situations that's taking place, but as the church to rise up and become what Christ has called us to become. To step into the situation and let everyone know that the kingdom has arrived. So I'm giving a clarion call to my kingdom people on the other end of this camera that's not going to allow things to remain the same. That's not going to allow things to, to be out of hand. But the Christ in you is going to step in on the scene and say the kingdom has arrived. Kingdom people has shown up. And when kingdom people show up, then there must be unity. When kingdom people show up, disease has to flee. When kingdom people show up, the enemy has to let hold. But if we don't understand 12 being perfection and authority in the divine rule of God, which has been given to us, then we fall short on our identity that we are in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. 
even when we were dead in sins, had quickened us together with Christ. By grace ye are saved, and hath raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. He has through the 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 the, the quickening or the resurrection. Now, Jesus being seated at the right hand of the Father, now we are in Him, therefore we are seated at the right hand of the Father. So when you're looking at the study of the right hand of the Father, we see that that's the place of authority, the place of rule, the place of dominion. Don't get twisted on where we started from in January. We said we're going to dominate this decade, and I know it looks bleak. I know it looks like there's no return. I know it looks like everything's out of control, but this is a setup for a come up for us to dominate like God has called us to dominate. We're not going to be afraid of the situation as we're going to see through the text through a uh, character that Jesus used, but we're going to believe by faith that we've been called for this moment to do war and make all things together work for good through God who has given us the strength to do so. I'm sorry I got excited there. And hath raised us up together, verse 6, and made us sit together in heavenly places where? In Christ Jesus. That's the key. In heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Outside of Christ, our authority don't work. In Christ, the authority works for us. Verse 7, that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness towards us through Christ Jesus. Once again, verse 8, for by grace are ye saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. Here we go, verse 10. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God had before ordained that we should walk in them. So now from the beginning... He ordained that we walk in the good works that he has created. So now we have to understand something that we are, we, we look, verse, uh, 2 Corinthians, verse, chapter 5, verse 17 says, we are, therefore, we are new creatures created in Christ. Let's go to that scripture. I'm sorry. I'm getting that. Uh, um, uh, I need to jump ahead to that. 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. Woohoo! I hope you're excited as I am. 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, beware in Christ. What's the difference? In Christ. What's the importance? In Christ. He is a new creature, a new creation. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Uh, we, we, we said in a few teachings a uh, uh, Sunday service ago that there's a new movement taking place. There's a new there's a new uh, uh, a new glory happening in the earth. There's there there's a refreshing. There's a freshness that is happening and through crises as the topic says being created for crises then now you get yourself at a point but God has created us in the crisis to be the answer to earth's problems today are we going to run from the situation or are we going to run to the situation as the solution so now let's look at the word crisis and bring this point out and bring it home so now we're we're created new in Christ not not the old things are passed away. Behold, the new is here. So now, what the, the as, as Paul said, forgetting those things that are behind us, I press toward the mark for the prize. If we're going to hang on to old hang-ups 
and make them new hang-ups, then we can't get to the opportunity that God is making available to us. So now we find ourselves dealing with old things and not able to ever get to the thing that God is calling us to. It's time for us to get over situation that has hindered us all of our lives. The reason those things are made continue to hinder us is because we're not understanding our new identity in Christ. Let me just say for myself and my experience, it doesn't matter what someone calls me. It doesn't matter what someone said to me. It doesn't matter even if I get a no from a bank, if I get a no from 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 uh, uh, wherever, it's not going to stop me because I know what my identity is in Christ. And just as I am in Christ Jesus, I can petition my government to get interference in earth's behalf and he'll give me a yes when all men will say no and I'm not going to be hindered by anything that the enemy throw for me because I have authority over the situation and I have a government that supersedes the natural and can come in spiritually and make things happen at our seeming impossible. Oh, Jesus, you need to lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways, acknowledge him and watch him direct your path. Because you've been created for a crisis. A situation may be trying to take you out. The situation may be hindering you or causing your body to change and, 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 and move according to an addiction or an issue of, of depression or some sort. But I'm telling you right now, if you are in Christ Jesus, you have a greater on the inside of you that's ready to come out and to show up and to get you out of the situation that's been holding you down. Don't allow people to hold you down. Don't allow systems to hold you down because there's another system that supersedes any system of this earth that you can operate by. And it's called the kingdom of God. And kingdom people who operate by a kingdom system are coming into the forefront and there's a transfer that's taking place. Even the wealth that's in this world is being transferred to kingdom people because they by greed or whatever matters have, have lost it, have wasted it, but now it's time for true kingdom citizens who understand their position with God and what the blood of Jesus Christ has done over 2,000 years ago has made it available for you to right now in this time of crisis step to the forefront as the voice of the king and say, by grace are you saved through faith and not of yourself. It is the gift of God. Not no works that man can do, but it's his workmanship. Speaking of God the Father, oh Lord have mercy. I, I, oh, let me calm down a little bit here. So now, we look at the definition of crisis and we think of the medical situation of the term. And a crisis is a crucial stage or a turning point in the course of something. So now, watch this out. A crucial stage or a turning point in the course of something. The point at which change must come for better or worse. So now the situation that we're in, we've been a few months in this thing. Still no vaccine for the, the pandemic. Still got protests riding and, 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 and chaos going on on every side. Still have uh, unrest going on in the world. But now we're at the point. We're at the critical point where this thing is going to turn for the worse or it's going to turn for better. And what I like about crises it's a time and point where a decision has to be made. And what decision will you make? So you're asking yourself, how are we going to get through this? You know, if you, you've ever been 
been in the doctor's office. You ever been in that hospital? I, I remember recently being in the hospital room and, and with my mother and she going uh, to the back because they didn't know what was going on and we we're trying to go into the room and they're rushing us out of the room and she's having a situation with her heart happening. Uh, 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 something triggered uh, something else, some die that she had or something triggered something else and now she's having heart issues and you know they're getting everything because we don't know what's going on and we're asking the doctors and no one's saying anything because they're rushing up trying to get their work done to, to, to get the situation back under control but now we're standing before a crisis we're at the turning point where it could go worse or it could go better but now see I, 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 as people are faith, my actions don't revolve around what the doctors are doing in their situation or what's going on or better or worse. I'm petitioning the government because I know what his word says. When I'm faced with crises, he can work things together for my good. So instead of waiting to see what they got to say, I go to heaven to hear what my father has to say and speak word to the situation. Maybe we need to stop posting about what's going on in the world. Maybe we need to stop putting opinions to what's going on in the world. And maybe we need to look up to heaven and ask the Father what you have to say in the situation. Change the hearts of some people. Create in me a clean heart. Renew a right spirit within me and I will make the situation work together for good because I've been created for this crisis. Come on, you need to say it with yourself. I've been created for this crisis. Don't look for someone to get you out of a situation you can get yourself out of. Don't wait for somebody to bring help because that person may not show up. Those that you have depended on, those that you have leaned on, those that you have called on may not be answering their phone right now. But if you call on the name of Jesus, he's ready to answer you and show up in your situation to intervene in your crisis because he has put the answer in you. Oh, Jesus. So now we're looking at the crisis as the turning point. It's the turning point where the thing can get better or get worse. Let's look at this situation out in the scripture. Uh, for the sake of time, we're going to just kind of go through it. And that's the story of Jairus and the woman with the issue of blood. And Jairus being a certain ruler that came to Jesus. Now Jesus just left in, in Mark, I believe it is, or one of the Gospels. He's just left dealing with the the unclean spirit that was in the man in Gadaria. So now he cast that spirit out. They go into the pigs, the legion, go into the, 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 the waters, and now the man is free. And those that they saw him, was he was now clothed and in his right mind. So all of this time, he had a crisis going on where some demonic forces had infiltrated his very being, causing him to be isolated from society, considered crazy, labeled in whatever label they have, dividing him all from society, leaving him by himself. But when Jesus shows up in the situation, all things change for that person. Ain't nothing else that could have been done because they didn't have no doctors available that can cast out devils. They didn't have no doctors available that can make him well. But when Jesus, come on say it with me, but when Jesus showed up, his whole situation changed. So now Jesus goes, leaves that place, goes to the other side to be met with another crisis. Matter of fact, he's now met with two crises that he's about to deal with. So now the ruler Jairus comes to him and said, my daughter is sick. Look at, look at it in, in verse 23. Mark the fifth chapter, verse 23. And besought him greatly saying, my little daughter lied at the point of death. She's at the point of death. Remember, Christ is being the turning point where it can get better or where it can get worse. She's at the point of death. And he says, I pray thee, come and lay 
thy hands on her that she may be healed and shall live. I'm telling you, it's time for us to take our hands off these situations and let Jesus put his hand on the situation so it can be healed and we can live again. Amen. And Jesus went with him and much people followed him and thronged him. The end of verse 23 and 24. And Jesus went with him and much people followed him and thronged him. That was 24. 25. And in the midst of that, a certain woman which had an issue of blood, how many years? You remember that number? 12. 12 years from 2008 to 2020. 12 years. Jairus comes to Jesus with a little daughter, his only daughter, who is at 12 years old. A woman with the issue of blood has been having this plague for 12 years. And watch what the scripture says. And verse 26. And has suffered many things. Watch this. 12 years. We crying about a few months, this woman, 12 years, dealing with an issue of blood, suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all that she had and was nothing better, but rather grew worse. Remember what we said? Crisis is the crucial point or the turning point of the course of something. The point at which change must come for better or worse. She tried everything that was available to her. She went to physician after physician. As the scripture says, many physicians, many times, spending all of her money, not getting better, but grew worse. But watch what verse 27 says. But when she had heard of Jesus, came in the press and touched his garment. For she said, she said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. In the midst of a crisis, when everything is looking bleak, and there seems like no way out. But she heard about Jesus. And what I like in this situation is, at the point of crisis, is at the point which the glory of God must show up. <laughs> when we're in a crisis, and there's no way out, it's the perfect time for Jesus to show up and the glory of God to hit the situation and everything has to change. I'm telling you, it's time for the glory of God to show up. I know what it seems like. I know what it seems like. But I believe it's a perfect opportunity that we can look at crisis as a time of getting worse or a time of getting better. And I believe through the power of and working in us that we are going to be better. We are going to be stronger. We are going to be wiser. We are going to be united. We are going to learn how to be brotherly uh, love as the scripture says. Not going away from the commandment but going to the commandment that he gave us through our vertical relationship with him and our horizontal relationship one with another because we've been created for this crisis. Let me be more specific. The church, no matter how far off track we are, we've been created for this crisis. Listen to me. Listen to me. The church, those that have been called out, and called in have been made ready for this time. I'm going to say the words that Jesus said to his disciples. Look up. Because the harvest 
it's plentiful, but the laborers are few. I have to end right there. I'll continue this message on. But I want to leave you with this. In Luke, the 17th chapter, verse 21. As I said, you've been created for crises. Luke 17 and 21 says, when they ask in verse 20, when is the kingdom of heaven, kingdom of God should come? He answered them, the kingdom of God don't come with observation. Neither shall they say, lo here or lo there. For behold, the kingdom of God is in you. And you have the power and the authority as being seated at the right hand of the Father to operate from heaven in earth to do exploits. No, nope, the answer is not over there or over there. But as the church and as those that are in Christ Jesus, Christ, the answer is in you. Well, God bless you. I hope you were blessed by that message. We are continuing on next Wednesday. We appreciate you joining us. We thank you for those that are visiting and have come across this message. God bless you. Continue to connect with us and I pray God's blessing over you. New Life family, can't wait to see you Sunday. A blessing from our pastors and myself. We're grateful for you. We're thankful. And to God be the glory. This too shall pass. And God will be glorified. Because we walk by faith and not by sight. Have a good night. God bless.